So we're going to talk about propulsion and recoil. Um, still the idea of the conservation of momentum. Now when I say propulsion, you guys know what I mean? The push forward, wonderful. So a jet engine or a turbine engine or, or a uh, big fan on the back of a boat, they use propulsion to push the object forward. They push the object forward by doing what? Sending something else backwards. Okay? Like with the big fan boats. You know what I'm talking about? They're using the bayous down in like uh, Florida and Louisiana and stuff. The big fan boat, the way that works is it, it, it sends air backwards, right? Pushes air backwards. In turn, it pushes the boat forward. Yep. Air is being sucked from the front of the boat and being pushed to the back of the boat. Engines on the side, on the, on the bottom of the plane wings do the same thing. They suck in air at high velocities and send them away at high velocities. Okay? Since the air goes away at a high velocity, the plane moves forward. Okay? Jet engines, the ones that power that power uh, rockets that go into outer space, or that used to go into outer space, since they canceled NASA. Okay? Those burn fuel, which then send tons of atoms downward at high velocities, which then push the rocket. Upward. Okay? Anyone watch Star Wars? Nice. You should be the best students in me. Come on, man. Okay? The TIE Fighter. You guys know what I'm talking about? Okay, it stands for Twin Ion Engine. Yeah, I know, I'm a nerd. Okay? The, the premise of that engine, and this is actually a real, a real engine that they are developing. The premise of that engine is they'll take ions, which are charged particles, and they will put in opposite charge, or the same charge as the particle in the, in the front of the engine, and then what do the particles do? So if I have a positive charge here and, and, a, and a positive charge ion right next to it, what does that positive charge ion want to do? Go away, right? So the idea is we have a bunch of positive charges, it makes a big positive charge, so those positive charges don't want to stay there, so they get pushed backwards. Things get pushed backwards, what happens? The other thing gets pushed forward. Okay. Kind of a cool idea. Alright. So hopefully I didn't give away didn't give away my uh, my little uh, demonstration here. I have a red car and a blue car. Okay. The blue car is the magnet side, no piston. Okay? So I'll put the blue car right here. And I'll put the blue car here. I feel like catching the blue car today. The red car has the piston now. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the piston out so that the that the red car, there we go, so that the red car pushes the piston on the blue car. Okay? The red car has some more mass than the blue car. Now what do you guys think is going to happen? Sergio? Um, well, would the mass really affect the Right, it's just, it's just going to push the blue car. Yeah. So what's going to happen? So the blue car is going to go this way? Yeah. And go to the right? Yeah. yeah. Just the blue car? Just the blue car. Okay. Anyone else? Both cars will move. Both cars will move. But the red car is pushing. But there's no piston pushing the blue, pushing out of the blue car. Just the red car is pushing. You sure? The force is strong. But only there's no the piston for the blue car is on this end. So how is the blue car going to push the red car? Because it has the Jedi force with it. That's a Jedi force. Okay, Kevin, you're right. Because the new ends. Third law. Okay, so we do. Push the blue car out. Oh, that was faster than I thought. Almost pulled the muscle there. <laughs> All right. So, a little, little tone down so I can explain. If I get the piston to stay in the, there we go. All right. So, I'll do it again. Oh, Sergio, stop using the force. So I'll I'll hit the I'll hit the piston again. So you see, both cars 
move, right? Because the red car pushes on the blue car, and the blue car in turn pushes back on the red car. It's the same idea with propulsion, okay? So on the Prez, you have a picture of a rocket. Everybody see the rocket? It's not our, it's not our rocket logo, but it's a, it's a picture of a rocket. We can zoom in on this picture. How did we get rockets? Well, we wanted to be unique. Okay. So here's the rocket, right? The way the rocket works is it burns fuel. Depending on the type of rocket, they, they burn different things. One of, one of the most commonly used fuels is liquid oxygen or liquid, liquid hydrogen. Okay. So it's a gas they put under immense pressure so it becomes a liquid. Okay. And they burn the liquid oxygen. When the liquid oxygen burns, it expels all this exhaust, all, all the leftovers from combustion, out of the back of the rocket at a rate. How do you put gas in so much pressure? Now you store air in a, air in a, uh, in a, like a scuba tank? Like, a, or like, an, like an air compressor? Oh. Same idea. Okay, you, just, you just keep pushing, pushing particles in there until there's so many particles that there's, there's just not enough space to move around. So you take gas and you push them in this, in this, in this small space so they're so tightly packed that because they're so tightly packed, they start to behave like a liquid. And they they look like they put them first, like... Yeah, it starts out of gas, and they just keep putting gas into the container until it becomes a liquid. Okay? So the liquid oxygen is sort of under high pressure, and, and they turn the, the engine on, and the liquid oxygen is sprayed into a chamber where it's ignited. Okay? Based on the rate the oxygen is, is sprayed into the chamber, that tells us how fast the exhaust is expelled. Because as this reaction happens, these particles get sprayed back really, really fast. Okay, does that make sense? So since the engine is pushing the particles back this way, which way does the, which way does the rocket get propelled? The other way, right? Does that make sense? Exa exhaust particles, we're talking about atoms and molecules, get set back at a very high velocity which in turn push the rocket forward at a, a velocity, a smaller velocity than the particles are moving because the particles have a much smaller mass, but there are hundreds of thousands of particles being expelled every second. Okay? So hundreds of thousands of very small things have very big velocities, then we can make a large momentum. And that large momentum has to balance out and push the rocket this way. Does that make sense? So think about this way. The rocket's not even on. Zero momentum, right? Turn the engine on. Large negative momentum, right? Large negative momentum creates a large positive momentum. So we can keep our momentum equaling. We can keep balance. We can keep our momentum equaling zero, right? Because when you start at rest, momentum is zero. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Same idea with the collision cars. When I hit the piston out with the red car, right, it pushed the blue car with a positive momentum, didn't it? So the red car had to have the same momentum going the opposite way. Okay? The red car propelled the blue car. Does that make sense? Does that idea make sense, guys? Okay. So let's try an example. A spacecraft engine ejects exhaust mass at a rate of 30 kilograms per second with an exhaust velocity of 3,100 meters per second. If the spacecraft and fuel have a mass of 30,000 kilograms, how fast is the spacecraft traveling after the engine has been operating for 10 seconds? Okay. So, here's the rocket. Stationary, right? Ejects fuel mass, or exhaust mass, at a high velocity, right? Creates, it creates momentum in this direction, right? So since it creates momentum in this direction, which way does the rocket go? The opposite direction, okay? This is rocket science, okay? So, <clears throat> let's figure it out. If the rocket starts from rest, so here's example 15a. It does say fum. Oh, I hit my thumb. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, so we start from rest. Well, what's the mass of the system right here? 30,000, right? 
So the total mass is 30,000 kilograms. Now, how long is the rocket operating for? 10 seconds. Ten seconds. And it ejects 30 kilograms per second, right? So if it operates for 10 seconds, how much mass is being sent backwards? How much? 300 grams. So uh, 300 kilograms. So 30 times 10 equals 300 kilograms. And we got that because it's 30 kilograms per second times 10 seconds. So the seconds cancel out. We get 300 gram kilograms. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's like we have 300 kilograms hanging out back here. Rocket in the front, right? This whole thing equals 30,000 kilograms, right? Right? So how much mass is left in the rocket? Twenty-nine thousand seven hundred. Good. Okay. So twenty-nine thousand seven hundred kilograms left in the rocket. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's the velocity of this three hundred kilograms after or once it's being expelled? When it's being propelled? When it's being shot backwards? Thirty-one hundred. Right? Well, that's 31,000. 3,100 meters per second. So VE equals 3,100 meters per second. And we want to find the velocity of the rocket forward. Right? So how can we do this? How can we do this? Conservation of... Momentum. The momentum before equals the momentum after, right? Our initial momentum equals our final momentum, okay? So before the engine's turned on, we have a mass of 30,000, right? Multiplied by, what's the velocity? Zero, right? We're starting at a velocity of zero. Okay. After the, the engine's turned on, 300 kilograms get expelled at 3,100 meters per second. Right? Right? Plus... 29,700V. What's a common error a student might make here? Okay, having the wrong weight, good. Having 30,000 instead of 2970, right? Okay, I like that. What else went to mistake? Not putting 300 when 3100 is the other. Okay. So putting the things in the wrong spots. What about directions? Yeah, right? Common mistake is direction. Okay. Because working this way, what would our final velocity be? If we kept going this way. Our final velocity be negative, because we're calling this drag this this gas going this way as positive, right? So that means the rocket would have to have what kind of momentum? Negative. And the students say it's impossible for the rocket to have negative momentum. Like, I have it wrong. Can you erase it? Did you guys see yourself doing that? Yeah. So, just leave it off. Okay. So, we should define a positive direction. It's fine if you want to call backwards positive. That's fine. But which way should we call positive? Forward. So that means that this 3100 is? Negative. Okay. So I'll, I'll do the, the, the difficult side. I'll do the, the left side. 
Yeah. 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 Zero. I encourage you to question my ability. I do, Sergio. I think I might have forgot a zero. Or I do it right. In my, in my brain. Okay. What do I do now? Rocket science has turned into seventh grade math. Good. Lost 93,000 or 930,000. <clears throat> okay, we're running out of space. We'll come over here. So we end up with 930,000 equals 29700V, right? Because we add 930,000 both sides. So what do we do now? Divide by. 29,700. 31.31 meters per second. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, on the PI over here, Okay, good. And do, do 300 plus 300 times 0 plus 29, 700 times 0. Yep, you do that. Okay, part B says, if the rocket was traveling at 20 meters per second before turning on the engine, what's the final velocity? Well, what's the small change here? It's just a minor change. For part B. No, not the direction. Okay. You're right. You're trying something. Oh, point of instead of like the engine, the fire. So the rocket was already traveling 20 meters per second. So let's say that the first part was lift up, was lift off. The second part, the rocket's in outer space, traveling 20 meters per second as it orbits. It turns the engine on for 10 seconds. What's the difference, Nikira? Perfect. We just changed this 20 to, or this 0 to. 20. Okay. So then how much do we have to start? No, not 600, 60. 600,000. So we have 600,000 plus 930,000. No. Won't be thirty one point thirty one. Or all of these are thirty. Okay. So six hundred thousand plus ninety three or nine hundred and thirty thousand. How much? Was it ten? One million five hundred and thirty thousand. Right? Divide by 29,700. Yeah. yeah, I can't do it in my head either. Which one of you guys? 51.51. What? What are you confused about? Yep. 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 Because it's the same exact problem as part A was. It's just instead of having zero for our initial velocity, we have twenty. So twenty times thirty thousand is six hundred thousand. The right side stays the same. We're still expelling three hundred kilograms at three thousand one hundred meters per second. 
Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions? Now, how is this rocket problem like a bullet leaving a gun? Because the bullet is at rest and it's inside. Okay. Uh, So what happens? Well, the bullet has velocity, it has mass. So it has momentum. It's going one way. And the gun recoils. Has momentum going the other way. Does that make sense? So in the propulsion example, we have a large object sending smaller mass backwards at a high velocity to propel the large object forward. When someone shoots a gun, it's the same idea. We just turn the positive direction. Okay? Sending a small mass one way with momentum, the large mass goes the other way with the same momentum. Right? And since they have the same momentum, that means the smaller mass has more, has a higher velocity. Just like here. The smaller mass, 300 kilograms, has a much higher velocity than the larger mass, didn't it? Right? So what happens then with the bullet and the gun is the smaller mass, the bullets, has a very high velocity when it leaves the, the gun. And the gun has a smaller velocity as it's kicked back, as it recoils. But what do you know about their two momentums? What is it? They're equal. Conservation momentum. We can go back to the blue car and the red car from the beginning. What do you know about the momentum of the blue car and the momentum of the red car? They're equal. Because initially there was zero momentum, right? Initially there was no momentum. We're at rest. Blue car gets shot forward with some momentum. Red car gets pushed back at the same momentum, but because the red car had more mass, it had less velocity. Same thing in, this, in the propulsion example, and same thing in recoil. Okay? So, check out recoil example. I, I have seen that one. Okay. So, here's my very grainy image of someone shooting a gun. You should go to find waitress. That would be a terrible idea. <laughs> no, it, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Or like we should like do bow and arrows or whatever. I think it'd be really expensive. We could, we could, doesn't the school have like arrows and stuff? They do, but uh, I'm not trying to, to operate those. So, uh -huh. all right. So here's someone shooting a gun. I know it's a very grainy, terrible image, so sorry about that. All right. But here's the gun. The bullet is going that way, right? Which way is the person experience? It? Which way is the moment for the gun go? This way. So the gun has momentum that way. Does that make sense? And what do you know about these two momentums? They're equal. They're equal. Okay. Anyone ever shot a gun before? Yes. Yeah. So I remember when my first time shooting a shotgun, my, my uncle was teaching me how to shoot it. Yes. And he told me to hold the gun real tight, and I didn't understand it, but I hold the gun real tight. So there's a little there's a space between the gun and my shoulder. And I pulled the trigger, and the gun went right back in my arm and a big bruise. Right? My first first experience of conservation momentum. Probably not, but I had a big bruise because when the when the bullet gets shot forward, the gun gets shot backwards. Right? Same momentums. So in order to hold the gun steady, I have to apply a force to it, right? Does that make sense? And we can use conservation momentum to figure out the velocity of the gun, and we can also use the impulse equation to figure out the force we need to apply. Right? So, let's try it out. I know my examples are out of order. We'll, 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 go, we'll go back to the other ones. So, a 4 kilogram gun fires a 70 milligram bullet at a speed of 800 meters per second. What is the resulting velocity of the gun? And how much force do you need to apply to the gun to keep it still? 
if the shot and recoil last 0 0.035 seconds. So recoil and propulsion guys are basically the same thing. Propulsion means we're propelling the large object forward. Recoil means it's coming backwards. So same, same premise though. All right. So leave a little bit of space underneath your rocket example. All right, maybe like the rest of the page. We have two more examples for that one. All right. For example, 18. 70 milligram bullets. Yep. How do I turn milligrams into, into, into kilograms? One gram is one times ten to the negative third milligrams, right? And one times ten to the third kilograms is one gram, right? I know. So, 70 milligrams is point zero. Is a, oh, sorry, what's the microphone? I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. Really, I haven't done a long time either, Sergio. So one times ten to the negative third grams is one milligram, and one times ten to the third grams is one kilogram. So it ends up being seventy times ten to the negative sixth. Kilograms. Okay? Or seven times ten to the negative fifth. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? Are they going to be the first one to be like that? Could be. Could be. Okay. Now, before the gun is fired, so here's my gun. Okay. Before the gun bolt and bullet are fired, what's the momentum? Zero, right? Nothing's moving, right? After the gun is fired. Well, it goes that way, right? Which way does the gun go? Backwards. Backwards. What's the total momentum still equal? Zero. Zero. Total momentum still equals zero, right? <clears throat> but now the bullet and the gun. Each have some velocity. The mass of the gun is four kilograms. Right? What's the final velocity of the bullet? Eight hundred meters per second, thank you. What's the final velocity of the gun? We don't know, right? Okay. So, P initial equals P final. Initially we're at rest, right? Initially we're at rest. So our P initial is zero. P final is going to be seven times 10 to the negative fifth times 800 plus 4v. Now if we keep going to the right as positive like we did in the rocket problem, the bullet has a positive velocity, so we're okay. But then our resulting velocity of the gun should be negative. Okay. So 7 times 10 to the negative fifth times 800, what does that equal? We're going to use e. Fifty-six times ten to the negative third, or point zero five six, plus four v. So you now track. Good. So negative point zero five six. Oh, that's an e. Equals four v. So what I do? Divide by four. So what's the velocity? 
Not 14. Close. Point zero. It's negative point zero one four. Okay. It's fourteen millimeters a second. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions? Questions. Now the second part says, what's the force we need to apply to the gun, right? Well, we know that change in momentum equals impulse, right? Which also equals F delta T. The change in momentum is 4 times 0 0.014 negative minus 0, final minus initial, right? For the gun, right? Does that make sense? You guys with me? Okay. Equals F times 0 0.035. So, where are you going? All right. So, 4 times negative 0 .0, 0, uh, 0.014 ends up being negative 0 0.056 which is our change in momentum, times F times 0 0.035, divided by 0 0.035, and what do we get? It's fine. What do we get? So now that's the force that the gun comes back with, right? Right? So in order to keep the gun stationary, what, what force do you apply to the gun? That much forwards. Right? So that's, that's the force the gun comes back with. That's the force the bullet pushes on the gun with. So if you're going to hold the gun stationary, then you need to apply that force forward. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Are there any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Do you see how propulsion and recoil are similar? It's both sending a small mass in the opposite direction as a, as a large mass. The smaller mass has a greater velocity. The larger mass has a smaller velocity because momentum is conserved. They start with zero momentum. The system ends with zero momentum. So whenever momentum goes forward, equals momentum going backwards. Any questions? Any questions?